it's time for your mix of movers and shakers, of doers and makers. It's time for Funko Fun Chat. Today's guest, you know him as the Joker from Bat Wheels and Iron Man from Marvel's What If? Meet Mick Wingert. I'm Mick Wingert, and uh, I'm a voice actor and from Southern California, and you would know me uh, these days uh, as the Joker on Bat Wheels, which just dropped. <laughs> Careful, Bat Bros! Uh, you would also know me as uh, Iron Man in the What If universe, the extended MCU. And I am Iron Man. I'm also the voice of Heimerdinger on Arcane. You reminded me of myself, a scientist. And uh, I've, for the last, uh, I don't know, f 14 years or so, I've been Kung Fu Panda when Jack Black is not available. Being the Dragon Warrior means that I can read minds. Since, a, since 2004, so almost 20 years. Actually, I love cartoons and grew up watching them, so uh, I couldn't get enough growing up, and I was a th community theater kid, and so uh, after university, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but this office I'm working at sure sucks. So anything but this, and uh, figured that I should come down here and, and make a go of it for cartoons. And I've been lucky enough to, to get into the community and get some work and that kind of thing. The breakout role for me was really, uh, was Poe. Uh, for the first Kung Fu Panda film, they released a game uh, through Activision. Once I unleash my total awesomeness, even I cannot be held responsible for what happened. And a friend of mine who was in the industry already, another fantastic, famous voice actor, uh, James Arnold Taylor, is the one who sent them my way and uh, was at an audition for the voice match and he said, oh. Jack Black's not really in my wheelhouse, but you know who you should call is Mick Wingert's agent. I spent the weekend studying Jack Black because I honestly didn't have uh, an impression and uh, booked the gig, thankfully, with the world's worst Jack Black at the time. I mean, I was basing it all on something he doesn't have, but that I just noticed in like some indie film he was doing at the time. So this is like 2008. I think it's called Margo at the Wedding. You know, he just like, he like jutted out his chin like this. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's the underbite. Maybe that's what makes the impression come to life. Yeah. People always pee in the pool. I don't think Dick and Maisie pee in their pool. I'll bet you $500 there's pee in that pool. So I started doing that, and that like kind of led me to where the Jack Black is. But if you played the game, you'd hear the world's worst Jack Black with all that underbite. And now I would just do it like this. I mean, I would just slip on in <laughs> to the impression. And uh, no underbite, no no fancy parlor tricks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm very lucky to be part of this, but I was I was in awe of many of the other actors that he pulled in, who not only could do voice work and do fun, silly things like you know we could all do these voices, but uh, but can you do this voice with uh, heart, with uh, someone who's seen a bit of life and has a perspective? And that that you know became the difference. I think is is that the team at Riot were really concentrating on getting, let's let's get some perspective here and some humanity. Uh, and I'm very, very glad that they went with me. I have always been a fan of Batman the Animated Series. Paul Dini, Bruce Timm, their whole crew just put together something that was a watershed for animation. And there, in my book, there is no Joker other than Mark Hamill. So I say I'm on the, I, I've kind of already done that because I did just book the Joker for Bat Wheels, yeah. which is kind of fun. And there's a little bit of Hamill-esque in there, but it's a preschool show, we have, so we have to keep him light. But if I were if I were to have my, my pick and choose, I would, yoink, I'll take that. Um, no, that's too cliche. Uh, I was gonna say, the, the last series on Netflix for Kung Fu Panda, Jack actually came back and did. So wow. I had to I had to take a step back and let him have his character back. Sure. What? <laughs> are you kidding me? But I would say there are there are a ton of roles that I audition that I go, I I know not only do I know I nailed that, but I want to play that part so bad. So bad. Again to Arcane, Silco. Jason Spizak does Silco and does a fantastic job. There's a monster inside all of us. That day, I let a weak man die. I wouldn't recast that. And if I had a, a dream part to pick from Arcane, it would be Silco. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and uh, there was a there's a demon named Barul in some DC Direct project, it's a John Constantine thing. I would have loved to have played that role because when I auditioned it, I remember I remember what booth it was. I was like in my office booth and doing the thing, and I had given him this like delicious kind of uh, Joss Ackland meets you know. Um, uh, a connoisseur kind of thing, right? Because he was supposed to be some like big hedonistic, fat, old school, like Hollywood producer style demon. Yeah. So everything was hedonistic, everything was over the top, everything was consumed, just wanted to consume everything. And that I specifically remember because I was like, I hope I get a callback for this. And nothing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a big deal to to represent the characters that that you do because they mean something and they speak into the lives of so many people and I'm not trying to inflate my job look I make cartoons for a living sure. right like it's not like I'm cured cancer I'm not doing brain surgery or rocket science but I will say this that I do take it seriously enough that when I am supposed to do the 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 responsibility of being an entertainer I really want to sh I want to represent well Oh, oh, I don't know. I used to be able to do an elephant really well, a, a trumpeting elephant, but, I, but now, now I'm getting older and it's a little hit and miss. Uh, I, can, I can definitely bark like a little dog. Uh, and... That was better. It's actually the Joker. In fact, me booking the Joker for Bat Wheels was like, is like a, um, uh, how it started, how it's going. Because I cosplayed the Joker before cosplay was cool back in 1990 uh, when I was in high school. And I was one of the like five people who dressed up for Halloween in high school because I'm that nerd. And uh, I had a homemade costume. I, 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 and this is like 1990. So it's, you can't send away for cosplay stuff, sure. right? Nobody's got the big purple hats and purple jackets and all the stylish wear. No, I, went to a thrift store, found a lab coat, dyed it purple with writ dye, and like made it from top to bottom. And it was, I'm so, I'm still proud of that costume. Still, it, it, I put it up against any costume out there. <laughs> oh, well, you see, Mr. J, it's, I don't think it's going to work out this way. What do you mean? I have a great time here, and we have so much fun together. In fact, let's go to the movies now! No, I don't think you're catching my, my meaning. I think what I'm trying to say, dear lad, is that we're just of different generations. Oh, age is just a number. Speaking of numbers, pick a card! Oh, boy. Now that's a fun chat, but there's more! Check out these other interviews and more fun stuff on Funko Fun TV.